Hello, and welcome to the Monster Painter. This week, I build a Viking house. So, we have our little Viking house produced by Renedra out of Wizbeak, England. I hope I'm finally pronouncing that correctly. And apparently it is not for historical war gamers under the age of three. That will definitely disappoint some in the community. So uh, what's in the bag? Hmm, some simple directions for this simple model. And one, two, three, bruise. All right, let's get at it. As always, the first step is to snip the parts off the sprues. I always find Renadra sprues easy to work with and they come right off quick and without a fuss. The model is very simple so I will clip everything off before moving on to the next step. And that next step is to take the trusty old utility knife and clean up all of the parts. This kit comes with a surprising amount of little bits and this process will help make all of it look much better when it's all finished. Next on to assembly. I have already glued together the large number of pots and the two beds that this kit comes with. And now it's for the base of the building. Make sure to do a good job of this lest you have problems later on. This kit is designed to have a removable roof, which is um, really most of the building. Uh, it allows you to reveal the interior during play, which is a nice feature. Um, so now I will assemble the slightly more complex roof. I am using plastic glue for all the construction. It works really well on these Renedra kits and if it's done properly will yield a very solid bond. And here is our charming little A-frame Viking house with its dandy removable roof all ready to be primed. But first Let's look at some of the other bits this kit includes. And this kit comes with a whole bunch of pots, a plate, and a bunch of cups. This is quite a delightful surprise. There are no less than five different sculpts, and they are all quite convincing. I'm really pleased. I'm going to glue them all onto some old bases I had lying around. I'm going to mix up the different sculpts so that they have a varied look. And I think these are going to make some great treasure tokens or clue markers or, you know, whatever. First, I will prime them up in acrylic gesso, my primer of choice. And then I will apply a thorough base coat of uh, burnt umber, uh, the base coat color of choice for this project, for sure. Then one pot each will get a, a layer of bronze yellow, a lovely warm yellow-brown color. The next pot gets a coat of iron oxide red for a little earthenware snap. The last pot is going to be painted with a mix of Mars yellow and bronze yellow. These colors will all give them a, a sense of unity as well as some variation for visual interest. Finally, I will paint the bases with a graphite gray. And now I have some lovely search tokens or treasure markers. These are going to be very useful. In fact, they will likely be more useful than the A-frame itself. Now for these rather Spartan Viking beds, primed and then based in burnt umber, followed by a layer of dry brush of bronze yellow, and then a light layer of dry brushing with a mixture of unbleached titanium, bronze yellow, and Mars black for a little weathering. They are ready for a weary Northman to rest his tired head. Okay, and it's back to our A-frame, and it is all primed up inside and out with a nice thorough layer of acrylic gesso. In the next step, while applying a base coat, I run into a snag. One of the walls of the A-frame becomes detached. It's my own fault for not making sure it was glued together properly in the first place. These walls are attached at a simple right angle and they're going to need extra attention. And I must say that unless you're using this thing for a TTRPG or something where you need to show the interior of the building, you are better off gluing the whole thing together in the first place. As a whole, this A-frame is very geometrically stable and will be quite durable glued all together. Um, otherwise, the walls will always be a little bit more delicate. Um, 
At any rate, I use my utility knife to scrape off the paint and the glue, and then I apply some more plastic glue in a more mindful manner in the hopes of getting a better bond. And here she is, repaired and base coated with a burnt umber. I did a much better job with the wall, and I think it will hold and be relative, relatively stable from now on. Now to get this thing painted up. The first step will be to take a big brush and some uh, Naples yellow and dry brush a layer onto the thatched roof. I'm going to take my time with this. I really want to bring out all the lovely textures on this beautiful roof and uh, make it a nice cozy little shack. The next step is pretty simple. I will use that same big brush to dry brush on a layer of Mars yellow to our Viking house's modest earthen floor. And as always with Renedra kits, this thing is full of some great textures. After that is done, I will use a smaller brush and add a layer of dry brushing to the wattle walls of our little A-frame. I will use uh, raw sienna for the job. It's a nice, earthy, warm, yellow-brown color, and I think it will do the trick quite nicely. The final step for our modest Viking house is to apply a layer of bronze yellow to all the wooden elements of the structure. Bronze yellow is a favorite yellow-brown color and is perfect for depicting wood. I think this has to be the most time-consuming step on this fairly simple model. And with that all done, we have ourselves a cozy little shelter suitable for a hardened Nordic barbarian. And with that, I just need to paint up the little fire pit that came with the kit, and we can look at it in its natural habitat. Who? You! Yeah, you! You're not really a Viking, are you? Sure I am, guys. I'm bloodthirsty, I love to raid and pillage, and I've got horns on my helmet. Well, you can't argue with that. Do you want to go raid some Irish monasteries? Do I? All right, let's go burn some monasteries. Yep, it's definitely an authentic Nordic house suitable for a proper Viking warrior. I don't know how versatile this Viking house is. You can only use it during a game set in the Viking Age at all. Well, it would probably work in any setting from the late Iron Age all the way up to the uh, late Medieval Age without much problem, really. Okay, sure, but that's it. Yes, and just about any quasi-medieval fantasy setting. For sure. What? Quasi medieval fantasy? Bah! Nobody plays that. And it's no good for sci fi. Way too historical. Unless there's time travel. Time travel? That never happens in a sci fi setting. Never! Right. When does that ever happen? This week we pit a terrifying Scorpion Man, a plastic miniature from the old 90s dungeon crawler Dragon Strike, against this badass in heavy armor. He is some sort of old 40k model who's been made medieval. Who will win? Let's roll the bones and find out. Fate has been cast. 
Now let's watch it play out. <laughs> The badass in heavy armor is victorious! Congratulations, badass! Without the dark, there can be no light. Next week on The Monster Painter, I take on an ogre horde. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. Ring the bell! Monster Painter.